Okay, so I got the uh, All Sun EM3610. This is a strip of nickel plated steel, 10 milliohms for 100 millimeters. And we're going to take this piece of nickel here in the back, which is 10 milliohms from front to back. And it measures as 10.17. Now because it's under 20, it has a ZR mode. I can hold it to make it more accurate. It slowly drops the uh, voltage a little bit and slowly climbs to get a more accurate reading. You see it climbing. one point oh five that's dead on this by spec at a thousand Hertz or one kilohertz AC signal which both meters are putting out should be less than 19 milliohms so if I check this one new batteries This one being the 20 or 30Q with a possibility of a 30 amp constant should be slightly lower, and it is the 13.56. So you can see we got some good test samples here. I also have a 1 ohm. Oh, here's my 1 ohm. My one ohm Dale shunt resistor, 100 watt power resistor. And you can see this one comes out exactly 1.001 ohms, which this is a warp center, so that would explain why. This is a four wire also, so to touch both leads at the same time is a little trickier. It's not done the same way your four wire is done, but you can see there's 1000, 1.000, 1 .000 exactly dead on and 10 ohm ten point zero zero I keep slipping a little bit there it is set this down to the 200 million range we'll start off with the 30 Q It's just, it's jumping all over the place. I saw 50 to 73, 80, 90, 60. I, I don't know where this thing's going. If I pinch really hard, oh, it went over 200. I'm getting down to 38, up to 45. 2,000 million range. This seems to read stable, but this isn't why I bought it. I didn't buy it for alkaline. It does me no good for the batteries I bought it for. And it just, it does not maintain a stable reading at all. If I did change it to the 2,000, I wonder if I can get this to even stabilize at that range. I can tell you right now, this is definitely less than 15. According to Samsung's data sheet, this is not 30. And partly the reason it's reading that inaccurately, well, albeit stable around 30, it's still reading it inaccurately because it should be in the 200 milliohm range, not the 2000. Now, another reason I bought it is because it shows that it will measure 
standard resistance. So let's go back to this nickel strip here, which was 10 milliohms. Make sure that's in view of the camera. The blue mat is non-conductive, by the way, so even if I'm not directly on the nickel, it will not make a difference. It's a non-conductive ESD mat, and the mat is not grounded out right now, so that's not going to affect the reading. This is supposed to be 10. And, yeah, it, no way. But still, I... I literally had to damage my nickel. Look at the dents I had to put into that to get that to do that. And it, it, it does measure accurately under 15 with this one. This was internal resistance as well. This one's, it measures accurately with this. It measures, measures accurately with this. This one seems to be having a problem with batteries anywhere in the 200 milliamp range. Uh, voltage, I believe, is reading correctly. Let me just double check it. 3.71 volts. In fact, can I do a hold on that real quick? It's got a nice backlight. I really do like that backlight. That's a shame. Hold. Auto hold. I'll set the battery right here so it's a camera view. 3.7182. Okay, so I would say in the 20 volt range, it's measuring voltage accurately. But there definitely seems to be a problem with the 200 milliohm range. Uh, if I go back to Twenty range, not milli ohm. This one should be one ohm, and then I have a ten ohm. Rid ridiculously accurate. We're talking zero point zero five percent tolerance with a two ppm Celsius, and the best I can get is point nine four from this 1 ohm. Going to be a problem with the 200 milliohm range for some reason. And we'll uh, put these probes together. One point zero one, and on the ten ohm, ten ohm exact. On the ten ohm here, I believe it said it does up to uh, twenty ohms, right? The higher it gets. The more out of spec it gets. Of course, there's no way to actually zero this out either. Even this cheap meter reads 10 ohms and 1 ohm accurately. Uh, and, well, this meter too, semi cheap. This meter and the other four wire meter I have, my HP. 34401A. It reads it. Of course, it's a Kelvin four wire system. Supposedly the same as this using a Kelvin four wire system without any variance of degree. It reads the 1 ohm and the 10 ohm perfect. 200 milliohm range is pointless and worthless for what I want to use it for, which is battery testing. It just, it won't do it because all my batteries are high discharge batteries that I'm testing rechargeable batteries I got a ton to go through here I mean I, I, I know I have these are probably the only good ones these are the bad ones these are the ones I definitely want to check 
And the Million Reader has so many, so much more benefits to it, it is because you can check them before you charge them to see if they get hot or something like that, or may run away on you. So this is a nickel metal hydride, chargeable. See, 278. I can tell you right now that is way too high and affordable. Let's find a different one. This is one of the original Radio Shack IC Square branded. 27. Awesome. So where was that one that was 378 again? Or 278, was it this one? Yeah, 270. Sixty-eight. Okay, I'll hold that. Let's go over to the that side, and it measures at one hundred seventy. Not jumping around as much. That's good. It's jumping around by about ten milliohms. I don't know if that would be in its claimed specifications or not. See if I can get it to stay still and get some pressure on this. That's probably gonna be the best we're gonna get. 244 versus 268. At least it's stable, it doesn't jump around as much as it does in the 200 milliohm range. The 200 milliohm range, I just cannot get to read anything accurate at all. It's just, it's all over the place. If it's not a battery, if I press hard enough to damage the nickel strip. I mean, look how hard I had to press to get that reading with, with, uh, with the all sun unit. The dents that it left in it. Okay, now this is nickel plated iron. This is 0 0.15 millimeter thick nickel plated iron. So this means that this is, is a lot more stiffer and stronger than pure nickel. Pure nickel, it probably would have put a hole through it by pressing this hard on it just, just to get the re measurement. On, on this one, take for example, let's go halfway. So we still have the strip in the background a little bit. So technically I should be able to go right to the middle and that 10 should turn into a five. And I'm not going to push hard here. There should be no need. I'll scrape it a little. That's not five. Nope. I can't get it down to the five milliohms and it claims zero to 199. If I take this, and I do that same exact point. I'll start one end here. I even have a little bit of scraping marks here because I had to scrape it. And then I'll go right here. I said that should be about five right in the middle. I was almost exactly in the middle there. Look at that. That's pretty good. I, I I'm I'm completely not interested in in in, uh, in keeping this unit. There's no purpose of me keeping it. I'm gonna pack it up. I'm gonna open a claim. Start 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 an eBay return. I, I like the, the 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 brass nuts embedded. It's a nice touch. I'm returning this, but I, I do know that I'm definitely not going to do the job for what it's rated for, what it, what it claims it can do, especially in the lower milliamp range. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped. That pretty much wraps it up.